All right, well, welcome back to the shop. You saw I just loaded the machine up with a bit of Baltic birch, three quarter inch Baltic birch. We are on the, on the, on the current guitar build, the third guitar, my Martin 00 style size guitar. Um, we're at the stage now where it's time to mate the neck and the body together. And to do that, I wanna cut um, a joint there. And in order to cut that joint, I need some way to make sure I cut that joint accurately. So what this is, is the neck joint fixture that I'm building. Um, it's very similar to the um, LMI uh, Robert O'Brien uh, jig. Um, there are some really good videos on that jig. Um, I took some inspiration from it. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick little rendering now. That's my version. Um, this one's a little slightly, it's slightly different. It's, it's all in one and it looks a little bigger. Um, the idea was, so I, my bench is 28 inches wide. So I couldn't build the O'Brien jig and have both the neck and the body clamped together, clamped in it at the same time. Because it's just too wide. The, the O'Brien jig has them fairly close together. Fairly good on materials. Um, so this one's obviously a little bit more material, but it's gonna allow me to clamp on a corner so I can have the neck here and a body here or on my bench. I'm a neck hang off one side and the body hang off the other side and still be firmly fastened to the bench with some holdfasts. Um, that I think is gonna give me the ability to do both the neck and the, uh, the neck mortise and the neck tenon, either the dovetail or the tenon, mortise and tenon joint at the same time so I can keep the router set up. I don't have to fiddle with moving the jig around and all that sort of stuff. Um, not really a big deal. I'm gonna do this on one guitar at a time. It's not gonna be like I'm building a bunch of guitars all at once, but heck, if I'm gonna build a jig, might as well build a jig, right? Um, so what we've got in here, some three quarter inch Baltic birch ply. Um, the first step, there's three, three cuts in the G-code, three tools, there's three, there's three separate tools. There's the eighth inch spiral bit that's in there now. Um, it's gonna drill all the holes that I, I've modeled. Um, right now it's held down this thing is just held down with double stick tape, and that is nowhere near enough to hold it firmly in place with all of the cutting forces. It'll handle the drilling just fine, but it won't handle a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna drill first, uh, cut a bunch of holes first, and then I'll um, drill them out because the bit that I have is only really good to cut about a half inch deep, and this is three quarter. I can push it, but it burns and it's bad for the bit. So. What I've got in there is I'll just, I've got the code running to cut a half inch deep hole, then I'll come around to the holes that I want to put screws in, drill those through into the spoil board, and then I can just, just through the, the birch plywood so I can screw into the, into the so that I can screw into the spoil board. Um, then, once those are screwed down, I will run the uh, V-carving tool path which will label a few things in case I decide to make this for other people. I want to have it labeled and it look kind of professional. And it's easy to do the V carving toolpath now. It's just simple. Um, the other reason I need the V carving toolpath is to run a V center line down, the, down where the neck gets held because that's very useful in centering up the neck. After the V carving is done, I'll put a couple more screws in because there's a few areas where the V carving goes right through the screw holes. Then we'll run the final cut, which is the longest cut. It's probably a half hour, 45 minutes of it with a half inch spiral bit um, to cut everything out, cut all the pockets, cut all of the inner profiles. Um, and I should hopefully end up basically with this. Now, the only other reason I'm still talking is because there's one new, not new, but one, one big, one nerve wracking piece of this. Um, this is really, I had to struggle really tough, a lot of juggling around to get all the parts to fit in one sheet that fits on my machine. My machine can roughly do 28 and a half by 60 uh, inches, maybe 28 and a half. It's tough to do 28 and a half. It can do 28 probably, it, well, we're gonna see that it's gonna do 28. Um, it's going to be very tight. I've. It, and because of that, I took a lot of time getting center exactly right. 
on this piece. Uh, I've also went through great pains to ensure that, you know what, I better double check that there's actually material. Oh, there is, yeah, this is an, so the material is an inch wider than 28 and a half. It's a 20, 29 and a half. But the machine travel from this point to this switch will hit at about 14 and a quarter, three eighths, somewhere in there. This code calls for it to run 14 and an eighth at least. Uh, so it, if you don't get that centered, if I don't get the, mach the, t the, the work piece centered enough on the table and the center mark accurate enough here, I could have problems. Um, and so what I've done is I went and found my extremes on both ends, on, on the 60 and on the uh, 29, 28 and a half. Um, and my initials that you saw me marking, that was that way about an eighth of an inch too far. I was right on the limit switch and it probably would have crashed. It was compressing the limit switch when it was trying to get to 14 and a quarter, which is half of 28 and a half. Sorry, it was trying to get to 14 and an eighth, which is half of 28 plus a quarter inch router bit, which is an eighth. Doesn't matter, bunch of math, bunch of numbers. Anyways, doing the dry run first, let me make sure I wasn't gonna crash when I go to run it for real. And so I just shifted my Y zero towards me about an eighth of an inch. Actually, I did it about a hundred thou. And that made it go to 14 and a quarter here, because that's the extent. The, the extents of this model is 14 and a quarter on either side of center. Or 14 and an eighth, excuse me, I keep saying a quarter. 14 and an eighth. So coming over this way, 14 and an eighth, it does not touch the switch. Going that way, 14 and an eighth, it no longer touches the switch. The other ways, uh, one end goes, it's, it's not quite 60 inches wide, this, this, uh, this model, this draw, this cut. Um, it goes 29 and uh, three quarters, I believe, over here, and that reaches without touching that switch, and then it goes 29 and seven eighths over here, and it just barely misses the switch over here. We are maximum, this is as big as I'd be willing to cut on this machine. I don't, I don't think I'd try to go any, any larger than this. Um, we'd be running right up against those switches. I mean, if I was really careful, I might be able to eke out another quarter inch um, of travel, but we're, we're, in, we're in dangerous territory at that point. So, anywho, that was an awful lot of talking, as I am wont to do. Um, we're gonna go after this. First, we're gonna get the drilling done, and then I'll, uh, bring, I'll come back and we'll do the V-carving. Okay, our holes are drilled. They all drilled nicely, just fine. And now I've got my CAD app, or I've got a screenshot of my CAD. I've got the drawing on my phone, and I'm just looking for the, the holes that are safe to drill. And these screws are just a bit too long, but with a washer under them, they are perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, for my own brain, stick a screw in a hole that is safe for each part. Um, I think that one's good and that one's good to get that part. So I'm just basically looking for each part that isn't, I'm putting, a, I want to put the screws where there's nothing going anywhere near the uh, the profiling cuts or the pocketing cuts that are going to get done, get done on this. That is all now in place. Now, to prevent the, um, to prevent any, oh craps, I'm gonna bring that picture back out and double check every one of these holes just to make sure I did put stuff where I'm supposed to. So when I'm ready to do V-carving, I'll bring you back. 
Okay, so everything's screwed down, everything is fastened, and I checked that I put the screws in the right places, so I'm not going to destroy anything. I've got my V-bit in there, and there's enough travel on this that I don't think I'm going to worry too much about the dust shoe being a problem. I hope it's not. I hope that it is not. I think it's got plenty of room. Um, so we're going to run the V-carving now, and that should really be very fast. So. Here we go. All right, V carving is done. That was easy. It's very fast. Not a lot to do. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way completely for just a minute. Out of my way, anyway, so I can drive in these screws. Uh, I need this and some washes. Um, that V carve down for the center line was a lot deeper than I was hoping for, but it's not a problem. It's perfectly acceptable. It's just deeper than I planned on, which is okay. So we'll just uh, screw these guys down nicely here and then we'll uh, proceed with a bit change that will uh, clear out pockets and all that stuff that'll take some time and this will hold everything together there we go that's holding nicely now everything is secured and we can start cutting pieces out. I'll bring you back when I get the bit changed and stuff. All right, quarter inch bit is now in. This is gonna be a fairly long one. Um, it's gonna do pocketing over here that's gonna take a little while. Um, and then it's gonna do all the inner profiles and then it'll do all the cutouts. But we're fastened securely so we should be safe to do all of this stuff. So a little delightful music for you while this goes after it. Okay, so that was about an hour or so, 50 some odd minutes. Um, a success. Um, a little shredded on the, on the edge grain a bit, more than I'd hoped, but what am I gonna do? Um, it, it's usable, it's not bad. It's just a little less crisp than I was hoping for. I did, however, cut into some steel. This little square had two screws in it that were right up near the edge. I didn't know it was corners, and it ate those steel bits, so I'm kind of curious to see what the damage was to that cutter, because it cut the rest of the job just fine. Um, it cut through the steel. It, it protested a little, but not, uh, not substantially. I don't see any visible issue at all. I don't see a nick. No, everything is fine. Hooray for carbide, right? So, now that we've got everything cut, first thing I want to do is get this panel off because it'll get covered up when I move the gantry completely over. So we'll pop this one out. This lettering, can you see the up? That came out really crisp, I like that. Makes me feel like I made some Ikea furniture. <laughs> oh, the peril. All right, so I'm gonna evacuate all these parts and get you back over on the bench when that's done. All right, so not all of these holes were drilled all the way because I didn't use them for mounting. So the next thing I'm gonna do is drill out all of the smaller ones first because that's the drill bit that's in the in the drill press right now and we'll just uh, 
I'm going to position this so that I don't have, hold on. I'm going to position this so that I don't need a backer block. Right there's good. Let's raise it just a bit though. Now we can, now we can get after it. So we're all laid out and ready to start trying some assemble assembly. Um, so we've got the neck side here, and I'm just gonna hold fast it down, okay? And we've got this part, which is the top, that gets stuck to it. Let me move all my sawdust out of the way. And so what I gotta do is, I've got them pre-drilled for the screws, but I need to pre-drill the part that the screws go into as well. And the fastest or the the most accurate way I know how to do that is with transfer punches and I like to clamp things where they're going to be so that there's a piece of binding so that that I can use the transfer punch to put a put a hole where I need a hole and this just happens to work out in this situation right where I want holes I've got places I can clamp. Okay. So first I'll do is make sure everything's lined up. And I'll tap on it a little just to firmly stick it down. Okay, so that is that is held really well. Take a transfer punch that fits this hole, the pre-drilled screw holes, and then I can just tap on them to uh, make a nice dimple where I want a hole in this crossing board and it's basically as idiot proof as I know how to make it so there let me take these parts off Put this aside here take a drill I'm going to free it from its cage do, 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 do. Freed. and I can see where all my holes are almost perfectly in the middle like I wanted them to be I'm just gonna run over to the to a vise here so I can hang on to it and drill and I'll just drill it because even in max depth isn't gonna hurt anything I'll just go this is a number uh, this is an eighth inch screw uh, eighth inch drill I'm gonna screw it together with I believe those are number seven um, screws. No, sorry, those are tens. Number ten, I think. I don't remember now. It could be number eight. Don't remember. But an eighth inch pilot hole into Baltic birch is perfect. So whatever size that is. So I'm debating whether or not I want to bother with glue. Um, I want to dry fit this whole thing together before I bother with glue, I think. Which means I have to put it together twice, which is fine. I'm okay with that. So now we'll take our part, and that's the inside face. I'm gonna make sure I did that. So let's get that, get that cinched down first. And just hold this, please, would you? Then we'll take our part here, and I'm going to clamp it again because I want it right where I would like it to go. I want to make sure that it's right where I anticipate or intend for it to be. Okay, and then we'll snug that side up, snug this side up, and then I can drive some screws after I tap on this just a bit to want it flush on that outer edge so I'm making sure I get it flush then we'll just take 
some, looks like these are two inch. Yeah, that's a two inch. Oh, these are countersink, so we'll take the two inch countersunk ones. <clears throat> I actually have longer ones I think I could use. Oh, uh, no, I don't have longer ones than these. Okay. That's fine. These are long enough. All right, so then we just drive them on in. I'm going to switch to a longer screwdriver bit. So that saves me a little frustration. And then drive home a screw. Sorry, that was noisy probably. And it's flush countersink. Countersunk below the surface. And that's noisy, but this is doing that job. Yeah. Probably gonna have to grab some more clamping solutions. But that's it. That part's on. First piece is added. And sturdy? Yeah, sturdy enough. I'm gonna leave that viced or um, held fast. And I think we'll do the center part here. This little guy, which goes up and that way. And it's going to take a couple of doings here because this this particular part is going to get screwed into a few times in a couple of places. So I'm going to grab, I need some sort of clamping. I need a way to get a, get a clamp all up on it. And it's obviously not held square just yet. About there is good, but I need to come up with a, a solution. I think if I can get a parallel clamp in here that might do the job and then we got to work out position here I want to make sure I'm centered so I've got to I've got to deal with that just a little bit figure out what my uh, what my clamping solution is for that I'm not entirely sure just yet <laughs> it's a tough one because it's hard to reach into I may just have to Improvise something here. I wonder if I can get a Bessie bar clamp through that. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I'm sure I can get one of these through, but is it long enough? Would it? Yes, it would. Okay, so we're going to take the end off of this and we'll pass it through like a sir. Just using what's available. And then we can tink this around a bit and get it squared and all that sort of jazz. So this is the other reason I'm not gluing yet, is I'm in no rush to uh, fight squareness at the same time. Come on now, got to put it back together correctly here. Come on. Oh, for crying out loud, get on there. There you go. Yeah, that'll do. So then all I gotta do is work out squaring it. So we'll do that piece there, and I can get another one of those. Just like that here. Just. The moment I'm centering it on the, the hole right above it, which may actually be a bad idea. That is the wrong place to center on. Yeah, it's got to be offset, so let's go here. How about that? Oh, come on now. I might actually, you know what, I'm going to switch to, this one's a much deeper reach. This one might actually work too. Yeah, this will work. Switch to this one. And I'm going to work out where this needs to land by looking at my drawings and grabbing a mallet and tapping it wherever it needs to go. That'll work better. Okay. That's 
going to do that job right there. And then this can finish that job right there. Making sure that we're accurate. That's perfect sizing though. The sizing is awesome on that. Okay. So now what I have to work out is where that's supposed to actually go and then I'll I'm going to get it clamped. So I've, I've proven that I've, I'm able to clamp it where I want it to be, at least in this plane. Um, actually, you know what I will do? I think if I put it on the... Try and decide an order of operations on this. Um, is there... No, there isn't. Yeah. This one's, this one's the tricky one because it's got to be fairly well centered. Actually, it doesn't have to be that precise. The, the shelf is the only one that really needs to be squared, the hinged bit. So this isn't a terrible thing. I just want to make sure I'm getting it pretty close. Um, so I'm going to go find out what the measurement is from the front and make it that measurement. And then we'll start screw, screwing it in. So I'll be right back. i got to take a measurement. All right, our number off the front lip is nine and a quarter inches. Got my uh, square set to that, and I can just hold it up here and reach through this imaginary hole. I'm gonna use my, my deed bleh. And just tink it into place here. Like that wouldn't Like that, squared up, these clamps are doing a very good job of holding things perfect for me. tries because one acts as a pivot point for the other. Go here. There. There you go. Now you're thinking with your dipstick. Okay. That is good. I'm going to cinch this clamp down a little better. It's barely hanging on to it. That one's on really well. Then we'll take our double check, our measure thrice, cut twice. There, two and a quarter, or nine and a quarter, right there. Ah, you moved. You moved equally, though. Let's check it again. Yeah, we moved a bit. Hang on a minute. I'll do it with this. That went way too far. Check it here. That one's good. Oh, it didn't go far enough. It's tight. There you go. That's good there. Is very good there. Okay, call that good. Take our transfers and uh, pop our transfer punches in. Did I cover a hole? I covered a hole. Damn it. Well, I'm gonna drill here now. 
because my drill is longer than the screws I'm using anyways. So I'm not going to hurt a thing. And then I can have them screwed in without fear. So then it won't shift around when I go remove that clamp and drill that fourth hole. Yeah. This is going to be fine. I don't think I'm going to need to glue it. I think it's going to do all right without the gluing. So I'm going to have to do that same measuring thing on the side when I get to that point. So we're going to, I'm going to do a transfer punch because that's going to put a little divot right where I want the drill bit. Okay. And then I can drill. And then we can screw it. See, it's coming along. Like so. And that one is now in. I can free this clamp. chassis. All I got to do now is a hinge, a vice jaws, a few other pieces, but day one, two, not day one because I spent forever drawing the dang thing, but for day one, she is ready to work with. This is where I envision it going is how route here. And it's up a little bit, but it's not that bad. I can live with this height. This height's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, that'll work. So then here's the, the key is that this panel is the panel that the neck will swing off of. It'll sit over here, which you cannot see very well right now. But it'll be hinged right in this vicinity to go swivel and the, the neck can hang out that way. I like this. This is good. This was, it's one of those um, drawing to fruition moments is what it is. Um, so that's how this thing's gonna be. That's how it works. Yeah, I think that's my only available corner for it, but that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, so. Next steps is I'm going to get the hardware together for all the moving parts. I'm also going to start working on a vice jaws for this. Um, those are just going to be some probably beech or maple. Depends on what I've got over there. Um, that'll, that'll sit in there. So that's step one. Go make it. Go make it. Go. Go make it.